It is my delight to be able to share with you direction. It's time for Direction with Pastor Errol Daniel, sponsored by the Streams of Power Ministries in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He will give me grace and glory. He will Thank give God. That is sufficient. Me that is sufficient. And glory. That's sufficient, Reverend. Lord, something seems to be going out of control. But contrary to popular opinion, you are in charge. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Stay tuned and be blessed with an anointed message from the pulpit. David's brothers thought he was a nobody. God, God saw, saw somebody, somebody in him and God is seeing somebody in all of you. Every one of you, you are important to God. Remove from the edge. Explain for your life. And let us go up to higher ground. Bless this country in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May we not prophesy lies to our countrymen and say it is all right when we are not living the way you want us to live. Today's message will help to equip you. Stay with us for the next hour. Before we get into today's message, I have this very special invitation to you to celebrate with the Praise FM family. Yes, from all across this country, if you're a listener, supporter, well-wisher of Praise FM, we invite you to celebrate with us as Praise FM turns 20 years. That's right, 20 years today, June 24th, and we're just thanking God for his goodness and his mercies for keeping this station over the years, and we're going from strength to strength. So this evening, we're meeting at the Streams of Power Church at Sion Hill from 6 o'clock to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. If you're a part of the Praise FM family, wherever you are, come from everywhere and let us celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Now let us join today's service. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We're asking you that the paths that we tread, Heavenly Father, will be paths that others would want to follow. The steps that we make, they would like to step in, the, in these steps. Father God, stretch forth your hand upon us today. Be gracious unto us. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the women, Father, who have caused us to become fathers. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you're going to help them today to play a very important role in helping us to be better fathers. We bless you and we honor you. For your God and there is none like unto you. Your great God. Before you go back, before you go back, we're going to be singing oh lord my god how great thou art how great thou art which one of you men could lead out in this i'm going to give you the microphone oh lord my god when i in awesome wonder which of you men consider all the walls thy hands have made i see the stars i hear the rolling thunder by power throughout the universe displayed. You're leading out, but others are following. Go ahead. Oh Lord my God. Sing it with him. When I in awesome wonder. Consider all. Consider all. The world thy hands have made. I hear the rolling sound. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Said I power throughout the universe. I power throughout the Then sings my soul. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Sing to the great God. How great thou art. You're doing 
Emmanuel, just magnify him, then sing. Again, I want to say God bless every one of you. I have not received a word to beat upon you today. But again, as I said early on, to help you to do better what you're doing. So turn around and face the precious sisters and your children who might be here today. And we're going to lead out the first stanza and the chorus. Come a little more. Make it a little more uniform. Don't spread out. Oh Lord, my God. Come around, Ken. Come. You're tall. Come around. Come, come to the back. Let him go to the front or somewhere. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go ahead, dear Lord. Where's the mic? Go ahead. The opportune time. On, oh Lord, my God. Go ahead. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder on sea all I answer me. I see the 
gentleman who's standing on your right hasn't been around uh, for too long but his wife is very proud of him but at last he has made a breakthrough <laughs> wanting to be in the house of God and since he has come back in this way he's been making his contribution how are you today I'm fine pastor yeah. and uh, members of the church praise, God. praise the Lord God has been good to you at all times, even before I walk as I was coming here, God was all time good to me. God was all time good. To me. You've come to stay. Yes, I believe so. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're recovering. Somebody tried to kill you, but you're recovering. What do you have to say as a man? You were working for your living and somebody tried to kill you. You're recovering. What do you say today? I just want to say good morning, church. I just want to give God praise and thanks to be the of the Lord this morning. As the pastor said, um, the enemy tried to kill me, but God is good. Amen. Amen. It's okay. That's okay. You just, are you just visiting or you come down again, friend? No, um, yeah, I could say I'm just visiting. Yeah. Okay. You feel welcome here? Do you feel any welcome? Tell me how you feel being here. Yeah, I feel good. Where do you live? Live up by the inn. Just up on the hill up there. All right. It could be up on the Dorsetshire Hill, it could be up a top village, but it's good to be here today, okay? I don't know if you're the youngest man or father, I should say, here. You have a, oh, you have a minute or 30 seconds. What do you say today? You know, I just thank God for blessing with a child um, and thank the, the church to appreciate, take this time to appreciate fathers. And it's, you know, it's, it's something that that drives fathers to, to, to improve and to do better. Um, that is the gas that um, all fathers need, you know, to move forward. What do you call the gas? Because I need to know so I could give you some more. What is the gas? Uh, appreciation. Okay, I know I understand. Any, any of the other men, fathers, want to say something? Just put up your hand quickly because I'm about to go back. Yes, I saw him here. Come forward. Good morning, Judge. Well, you might not know about all, but I've had a lot of close encounters. I'm just thankful for being here to um, celebrate Father's Day. That's it? You said you had a close encounter? Hmm? A number of them. A number of them. Hallelujah. Your father of how many children? Two. Two girls. Dean Church? Francesca and Fia, could you stand, please? I 
again god bless you all i'll be sharing just now i want you to go in the scripture with me and perhaps after a short presentation we'll have a discussion it's church we're in the house of god amen, amen. say amen. amen god bless you all go back and sit down for the time <laughs> hallelujah again thank you for coming this is the right place the house of god Joshua 1 8, the successor of Moses. Our children will succeed us if Jesus doesn't come soon. What did I just say? Our children will succeed us. More and more as I study. I am hearing what the Lord is saying. I'll take it from verse 8. Read it out loud with me, please. That is Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt have, make thy, pardon me, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Two powerful words there. Thou shalt make thy way one, prosperous. And thou shalt have what? How many of you as children of God, or people in general, how many of you would like to be prosperous? How many of you would like to make good success? Amen. So this is the book of instruction that teaches how to be prosperous and how to be successful. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Day and night. For then thou shalt, thou shalt what? Make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. John in the New Testament had a wish for everyone. And it goes something like this. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. That thou mayest what? Prosper. And be in health. Even as thy soul We have technicians who are working with us and helping us with the fluctuation of the current. Thank God for the generator that was given to us from, um, given to run Praise FM. It wasn't really to the church, but the church is benefit, benefiting from it for all these years. He said to me, Danny, if current goes when you are broadcasting, what happens? I said, well, we'll shut down until we get back the current. He said, that's not the way to run a radio station. You need a generator and a good generator. And he appealed to the church so that they could purchase one for us. And we thank God. Now, he has gone on. That's what I'm saying. Somebody has to... Some we, 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 we have to leave, we have to leave as such an example. But when we move on, somebody would say, you know what that man did was good. I'm going to do something like that. I said, we're going to be practical today, you know, very practical. But again, we thank God for the qualified men who are in this church and they know how to look after things when things go wrong. You could appreciate them. You really should. Some people watch things happen. 
while others make things happen. So thank you men. And we also have some young women who are helping to make things happen. As I said, all of you, you play a very important role in the kingdom of God. So back to, back to Joshua. And back to John likewise. John first. Beloved, I wish above all things but thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. Now prosperity will help you to take care of your household. Don't miss a good place to say amen. amen. Prosperity will help you to take care of your household. And every good father would want to make sure but his household is taken care of. The Bible says if a man does not provide for his family, he's worse than an infidel and has denied the faith. So you are a Christian father and we commend you for doing well. Hard working, honest, and whatever you work for, be it much or little, and you take home what should be taken home, then you have a wife who should be able to know how to spend what you bring home. Um, I went to see my brother the other day about a little business, but before I got to him, that is Brother Woods, one of the new men in the church, and don't feel badly when I call his name. He, 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 he likes to learn, and he wants to do things. None of you pass your mouth on him in any way to hinder him. He wants to learn, and he likes to do things. And those kind of a people, I gravitate to them. Those who know everything, I keep away because I have nothing to tell them. They can't receive anything from me. Are you getting me? Yes. Practical. And a man came up and he was so broken and he told me the story before others. He said, I really don't know what to do again. I married a woman. I married him, married her with children. And I didn't mind that. Every cent I work for, I carry it home. And he said, I'm making good money, but the woman is not satisfied. She's always on my back for more and more. And he, he said she has come to the place where she started to look outside to get more. What a shame. What a pity. You've got to know the ability of your children's father. If you push them to bring in what they are not working for, it simply means that one day you might have to bury them before time because they could go and take up what they didn't put down and in the process they can be killed or they can be taken away from you in the process by going to jail. So you've got to know the financial ability of the man that you allow to be the father of your children. Not only his financial ability, but, but other abilities. So he said, pray for me. Pray for me. Because I don't want to commit myself. My idea, he said, is to walk out of the home. And, and, and most times, it's better to walk out when reconciliation cannot be had. In the sense that if you're going to stay and somebody is going to give you um, an early or untimely death, let the person live and you live also. 
Not the best way to go. But it's one of the ways. So, godliness with contentment is great gain. And I want to go ahead of myself. The few dollars and cents that might be brought into the home coupled with what you get as mothers. You can make ends meet. Amen? Amen. So the man deserves a good meal when he comes home from work. Say amen. amen. Not above your means, but he deserves a meal. Because if you save all that you work for, then you're living on somebody else. So you spend some and you save some. And always remember that there might just be what the older people used to call rainy day. Some, some of the young ones do not know rainy day. They don't cater for rainy day. So when the rain begins to fall, and sometimes it is rain like peas, it is expense after expense for things that you did not think would happen. And to save insult by going around with a sheet of paper, begging everybody, and um, thinking that everybody is unkind, to say that you've got to put something aside for rainy day. For the day that you might just have a need, it is better to prepare than for the rain start to fall. You have no umbrella, there's no place to shelter, and you know you become soaking wet. I'm sure you could decipher that. So, we live within our means. There's no place for idleness or laziness. But there's always a place to do with your might what your hands find to do. This book gives us that kind of a guidance. To become prosperous does not mean you must go and take what others have. No. You have to work. And it's a blessing to be able to work. One of the first assignments that God gave to man after man was created was work. He said, you see this garden, take care of it. What made work became so laborious thereafter was when man sinned, when man ignored what is in, it was told them by God, then work became laborious from the sweat of your face. It wasn't before, but after the ignoring God's word, judgment was pronounced from the sweat of your face. You're going to eat bread. Do not, please, do not jealous anybody for what they have. Remember, you'll get an opportunity just now. We'll leave time for that to respond if you want to respond. If you want to say something that is enlightening. Let's go to the book of Genesis. I find an interesting story in the book of Genesis, chapter 27. I can still see and see clearly. Sometimes I use 
reading glass. But the story begins with a man who had advanced in age. And there's some things when you're getting down in age, you lose. I wonder where are the people today? For him, his eyes became dim. Simple meaning, he was losing his sight. And you don't have to be ungodly for your eyes to become dim. Are you hearing me? I know a lot of precious godly people whose eyes have become dim. Some who cannot see at all. It's not judgment that is upon them. It is borne out in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. From youth, or from the cradle to the grave, things happen. To man. Isaac, as you know, was Abraham's son of promise. Yes, Abraham had another son before Isaac. But it was not God's will, perfect will for him to have that son. It was God's permissive will. Again, his wife thought that she would help him out and help herself out because he was stricken in age. And she said, I know God said, but it doesn't seem as though this is going to be possible. Look at your age. Look at my age. So let's help out God. That's one of the worst things any one of us would want to do, to try to help out God. By trying to help out God, Ishmael was born. And if you go into the history up to present day time as to that offspring by the name of Ishmael, what has happened in the world since? But I talk about Isaac. Isaac was now old. I wonder how many of you would get old. The talk today is an old talk. Let me live fast and die young and make a beautiful corpse. Ain't nothing wrong in becoming old. The psalmist, in one of his testimonies, said, I was young. I know that as you become older, there are those who do not understand. And they would say, move your old self. What you're saying there is for old people. But you see this book? You see this book? This book, make sure you get it, brother. This book is a book for the young and a book for the old. It tells us how to order our lives when we're young. Like, remember now. Remember now. Now, in your youth, remember now your creator. You don't wait until you're old. Now that you're young. There's another line to it. Don't waste your life in sin. So he said, I was young. Now I am old. And by observation he said, I have never seen. I have never seen. I have never seen. 
the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. On this Father's Day as it is dubbed to be I want you to consider what is written in the word of God. Young Isaac obeyed his father to the extent that he was willing to become a sacrifice as God required of his father. Take now your son, your only son. And I said before, Ishmael was a son. But God looked at Isaac and said, your only son. Take now your son. We're going to Mount Moriah. And you're going to offer that son as a sacrifice. The faith and the trust of Abraham in God. He took his son, the willingness of his son. I'm talking about being a youth. And um, in, in a youthful age, it's the time when you tend most to be rebellious. Isn't that so? Hello, isn't that so? It's a time when the boys do not want to hear what father has to say. You live your life, let me live mine. It's the time when girls look outside of the proper upbringing and sometimes their, their eyes are dazzled with things that different ones could show to them. But Isaac in his youth He obeyed. And even when he was placed on the altar, the voice of God was heard. Abraham, Abraham, don't touch that child. I have tested you, and you have passed the test. Now, Isaac must raise his own family. And you know how the family of Isaac got started? Anybody re remember? Abraham said, I don't want to die until I see my son get a quality wife, a woman of class. Not just a pretty face woman, but a woman who would act as a Proverbs woman, Proverbs 31 woman. You have to know the Bible or jot down what I'm saying. What kind of woman in Proverbs 31? Can't read it, no. Proverbs 31. But listen to me. That woman is special. Her behavior pattern. The kind of a Life that she lived in the fear of God that was demonstrated before the public. Chapter says, favor is deceitful. That's the last verse, I think. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. If you think by lipsticking and ruching and airing in and the latest fashion, is what makes you a woman of class, you lie. And did I say that those things should not be done? It's your mouth. If you want to lipstick, go ahead. If you want to rush up, it's your jaw, go ahead. If you want to air ring up, it's your air, go ahead. The latest fashion, go ahead if you can afford it. But it says, favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And when God praises you, you are really praised. Let me say that again. When God praises you, you're really praised. 
And the men who would run behind a woman because of those things I just said, they have to realize sometimes they have to take off those things. Help me, God. Please help me. As a mother, you play a very important role in the life of your father's, of your, your, your children's father, that should be. You can break him or you can make him. As a matter of fact, Proverbs 14.1 tells us a very important thing, if you'd like to look at it. Proverbs 14.1. I told you the textbook is the Bible. Proverbs 14.1, do you have it? What does it say? Every wise woman build after a house. Now, don't go on anymore as yet. Let's say it again. Every wise woman buildeth her house. Another time. Every wise woman buildeth her house. Sometimes I ask, what does she take to build her house? What are the materials that a wise woman uses to build, build, build her house? The verse is not finished. It says, likewise, every foolish woman tear it down with her own hands. You can build with your hands and you can break with your hands. But you'd be wise enough not to break, but to build. You have to build up that man who is the father of your children. Sometimes kind words help to build. And you would give me some of the different things. Sometimes kind word. Soft answer turn if we want. But grievous word. Okay. So I'm beating up on anybody, but I've been asking the Lord to help me what to say. Because, I mean, Father's Day and Mother's Day, when you're hearing Happy Mother's Day, Happy Father's Day. And, and some people who say those things, they don't bring any happiness into your life. They do nothing. It's just words for some people. Because while they're breaking you, they expect you to be happy. So every wise woman, and incidentally, Minister of Health, you know that. You were raised here as a child, from a child, that is. You're now in health. And there are lots of things you're asked to sign to, I believe. You correct me if not. But in the area of health and what people are asking for these days, some people... Ain't no way two men would be able to produce a child or children. There's no way that two women would be able to produce a child or children. That is not God's design. The man's makeup is far different from the woman's makeup. One is called father, that is the man. One is called mother, that is the woman. One is a giver, the other is a receiver. That is God's design. Some men and some women, they have abandoned the book. And so they teach and practice another lifestyle. But God's book, when was a couple of weeks ago we said Happy Mother's Day? Now today we're saying Happy Father's Day? And mothers deserve to hear that. Fathers deserve to hear that.
Apart from the father and the mother in the home, we have the children, part of the family. And I, I heard one man of God, I didn't expect that from him, but was saying the other day, if man and man get married and a woman and a woman, just now only old people would have because there would be no more production, no more productivity. I, I, I heard him. It was in the crusade at Shams. And when, when I go to these kind of meetings, or any meeting, I want to listen carefully to know what people are saying, what they're passing on to others. Think about it. Doesn't matter how long they get married for. And what kind of a play they would have. A man and a man would never ever be able to produce a child. A woman and a woman would not be able to produce a child. So happy Father's Day. If you didn't plan it when it happened, you can make the plan work for better. And not for worse. We sang earlier on that we have a father who is in heaven. We model him. We hallow his name. We give reverence to him. And as children of God, we do not want God to ever say about us as is written in Isaiah chapter 1. What is that, Pastor D? Hear, O heavens. Give air, O earth. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. We don't want that. God has been taking care of us. Say amen. amen. Hasn't he taken good care of you yes. to this moment? Yes. And I like this song, God will take care of you. Be not dismayed, whatever betide. Sometimes we have rain. Sometimes there is sun. But the good God gives the rain and the sun to fall upon the just and the unjust. And we must thank him. Amen. God will take care. Peter says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. So we wouldn't want to rebel against him. That word rebellion again. We don't want to rebel. I have nourished and brought up children. And that is painful. Very painful. When you know you would have done all that you ought to have done. And your child or children rebel against you. That is painful. Is, do I have an amen? amen? Or you don't care? Yes. It's painful. Yes. I've received telephone calls, likewise, letters. Please pray for my daughter. Please pray for my son. Up to yesterday, one of them said, Thank God, my son at last is going to get married before next month is out. I've always prayed for him that he will find a good partner. Find, the word is find. The word is find. So that means you have to look. You have to do what? Look. It's not everything that rushes to you. It's good. Isaac got his wife when Eliezer was obedient to Abraham. Eliezer was sent, given specific information, instruction, as to where to go and what to look for. And cutting the story short, Rebecca 
was the one who was chosen to be Isaac's wife. Her, her kind of a lifestyle, you know, as a young girl, was modeling the Proverbs 31 woman. She was helping to take care of her father's animals. The days of chores should not be over for our boys and our girls. I said, the days of chores should not be over for our boys and our girls. The girls must be trained to do certain things, especially if they expect to live and would get a husband. And the boys also must be exposed to chores, sometimes the tougher ones than the girls. But that is what helps to make him a man. The Bible says the woman is a weaker vessel. I'm not against equal pay for equal work. If the person locally can do the job, pay him, pay her. Whether it's a male or female, reward them for the performance. But it remains the Bible way that whenever God spoke in the book of Genesis, he says, he, the man, shall have the rule over you. Um, who are the ones who are against that? It is said that women folk were treated real badly by even some religious people. And so to bring it back, and not only to bring it back, you move from one extreme to the next. Whereby instead of allowing the sisters to get their rightful place, it is getting out of hand. Where some sisters think that they are above their husband. Doesn't matter how much money you're bringing in. What qualification you have. You have to consider before you marry the man, before you let that man become the father of your children. You have to consider that you would have to live with him, with her. Both of you would have to live together. So not move your dunce self. Not move your stupid self. You don't do that when you're lying in. You don't do that when you're courting. Let me see in your eyes again. I can see stars in your eyes. <laughs> Just like the stars on a starry night. I'll take you to the moon and bring you back safely. This is not like me, but um, we have to, you know, it's Father's Day. It's not normally like me. And if you're offended, I'm sorry, can't help. It's time for us to think. And by the grace of God, he is going to help us. We don't have to continue to go down. The paths that is not expected of us. So who was chosen for Isaac? Rebecca. She was a, a very industrious, ambitious young woman. She was saying she was looking after her father's flock. When Eliezer went up to her, having prayed before, some of us taking prayers out of our choice these days. I don't have to pray about that. I see her. I love her. I see him. I love him. What do I have to pray for? I love him. I love her. What are you talking about pray? It's important. Very important. 
Eliezer's prayer was something like this, God, show me the person. And Lord, this is what I want you to do for me. If the person does such and such, then I'll know. I'll know. So, he advanced on his journey. And he saw this young woman drawing water. Drawing water. Again, there's a time for young boys and young girls to do something. Study and study well. But apart from beating books, you have to learn to do certain things. And it's, it's, it's better when both of you, let's say, can do a little cooking. So if one is so tired, the other one could take over. You follow what I mean? But really, it is, as far as I know, it, it is the duty of the wife to look after her husband. Make him a nice food, but he wouldn't want to go out elsewhere and, and eat anything. Hear me from the word of the Lord. He said to her, I'd like you to, to give me some water. And she said, kind young woman, I'll not only give to you water, but I'll give your animals, your camel water also. And he said, that's it. That's it. That's the sign I asked for. He is not ready to turn back. Because his selection was in answer to prayer. But he could not kidnap her. Girls, don't run away with any man. Doesn't matter how much they say they love you and what they promise to give to you. Don't run away. Don't. Whether you're a child of God or not, don't run away with anybody. Nobody could treat you better than God. Nobody could treat you better than God. Carnival is coming up. How many windows would be left half open? And when some parents think that the children are in the room, they're really on the outside in some pub or some place that later on they regret. I'm talking for real. I said we're going to be practical today. I have to help to father you. John said, I have no greater joy than to know that my children are walking in truth. When our children are not walking in truth, we put down our heads in shame. Especially us, like me, is a pastor son, is a pastor daughter. Are you hearing me? I've read it. No greater joy than to know. And you as church members who come here, whenever you walk in truth, you do good for the body of Christ, you do good for the local congregation. Are you hearing me? I hope. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor D. We are out of time. We'll definitely have to continue this service next time. Thank you so much for viewing. We trust that you are blessed and encouraged. And if we can be a further help to you, remember to get in touch with us and let us know. You can write to Direction, P.O. Box 443, St. Vincent, West Indies, or call us at 784-456-1636. You can also visit us online at streamsofpower.com. Again, just a reminder to all the Praise FM family all across St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Winwood, Leeward, Kingstown, wherever you are, join us this evening, 6 o'clock, at the Streams of Power Church, Sion Hill, as we celebrate 20 years of Praise FM. See you there. May God richly bless you. <laughs>